Dear students, welcome back to the chapter statistics. Today we will see what's the meaning of measures of central tendency. The sentence measures of central tendency may be new to you, but when we come to it, you have studied in previous classes. Measures of central tendency means a value that represents a data, a small data or a large data, which means average. Now you know it, right? Average means it's a value which represents a data. And it is also called as measures of central tendency. Let us see one by one. Mean. Mean is a value which we will get by adding all the values and dividing by how many numbers we have. Median is also a single value that you will get by arranging the data and taking out the value in the middle if it is an odd, odd number of observations and if it is even we will see it now and the next one is mode mode is the most repeated value in a data for a data we can have no mode or one mode or two mode or more than two modes now the next one is a range a range is actually a weak average which actually tells, how, tells us how well the central tendency represents the data. Which means for a data, if range is a small value, which means that group is homogeneous or that group or most of the, or all the people are of the same type. I'll give you an example. In a class just out of 10, if the range is, let's say, one or zero, which means most of the students are of the same type. Maybe all of them are average or maybe all of them are high achievers or maybe all of them are low achievers. At the same time, if the range is high, let's say nine or 10 for a test out of 10 mark, which means the huge range. In such situations, we have to understand that this group of people or this group of students are have a big variety means there are many low achievers many high achievers and many average students let's see in details so average are of three types mainly mean median and mode mean we get it by adding all the values and dividing by how many values you have median we get it by arranging this is important order them and then choose the middle value mode is the most repeated to find range we apply the rule larger value minus small value again let's see one by one mean mean is actually represented by the symbol x bar and it is written as a formula sigma we call it sigma there is one more sigma that you will study in in chemistry and even in statistics higher statistics this is also sigma and this is also called sigma but we call it as summation we have to add this means we add the values so sigma i is equal to 1 to nx i means we add all the values given to us divided by total number of observations let us see an example we have values here and if you want to find the mean x bar is equal to 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 0 plus 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3 whole divided by how many values do we have we have 10 and we calculate the, the value to get the mean of this data once again if you have a larger data we have further a detailed formula sigma xi fi divided by sigma fi don't get panicked on seeing this complicated formula but this is really simple when you have a data which is arranged in a table but remember this is still ungrouped because grouped means it is arranged in terms of intervals like 10 to 20 you have let's say five people 20 to 30 you have eight people something like that arranging them in intervals such data are called grouped this is not arranged in in intervals so this is still ungrouped data but why are we arranging in a table instead of writing all the values one by one so that we will not miss or lose any information it is arranged in a table where we call the first column or the items as xi and how many times it is repeated is called frequency which is represented as fi then to calculate we add one more 
column to calculate between xi multiplied by fi. 10 times 1 is 10, 20 times 1 is 20, 36 times 3 is 108, and so on. Finally, all these values you add, that value is sigma xi fi. That's what we want. We can say, rewrite this in the form sigma xi fi divided by n. This is actually the representation of this formula. So from here, we will get sigma xi fi, and this means n, or this is sigma fi. Now let us see median. First of all, when you hear the word median, the most important thing is arrange the data so that we can choose the middle observation. Median is the middle, middle value. But there is a problem. When we have odd number of values, it's easy. For example, if you have nine, which is an odd number, we add them nine plus one, 10 by two. Fifth value is the answer, simple. But if you have even number of values, let's say 10 values, then 10 by two, fifth value plus n by two plus one, sixth value, and then we have to divide it by two. We add them and then divide by two. Let's see the next one, mode. Mode is the simple one. Mode is most repeated value, or we can say highest, uh, the value with, value with highest frequency. But there is a problem with mode. For a data, we can see there can be no mode, one mode, two mode, or more modes. Let us see the details. We, here we have four is repeated many times, so mode is four. In the next question, four, four, five, five. Others are repeated one time, so we have four and five as modes. This is called bimodal class or bimodal group. This group has two modes. Next case, six, seven, eight, nine, two, three, four. Nothing is repeated. Here, mode is, don't write zero, no mode. We have to say no mode. And in this situation, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine. In this case, we have seven is a mode, eight is a mode, nine is a mode. So we have three modes here. These are all certain cases when we find mode. Next, let us see the examples. The following number of goals were scored by a team in a series of 10 matches. Find, mean, median, and mode. Whenever we have to find median, the first step is to arrange the data, and usually we arrange in ascending order. 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, 3 is repeated 1, 2, 3, 4 times. Then we have four, four, five, and count to make sure we have taken all the values. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so it's correct. Now to find mean, the formula is x bar is equal to add all the values: zero plus one plus two plus three plus four plus four plus five, whole divided by ten values. So divided by ten. When you add all these numbers, you'll get 28 divided by 10. So mean is 2.8. Next, we have to find the median. We have even number of observations. So it will be total is 10. 10 by 2 as the value plus 10 by 2 plus first value divided by 2. 10 by two means fifth value. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth value plus the next one, sixth value. So three plus three divided by two, which is three is the median. And the next one is to find mode. Just the most repeated value. Three is most repeated, so we have only one mode. So we get all the three now. Let's see the next question. In a mathematics test given to 15 students, the following marks out of 100 are recorded. Again, we have to find median, so we arrange the data. The least number value is 39. So starting from 39, we have 40 is repeated twice. 41, 42, 46, 48, 52 is repeated three times. 
then we have 54 60 62 96 and 98 let's count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 so it's correct now find finding mean we have to add all the values and divided by 15 when you add all the values you will get 822 divided by 15 which is going to be 54.8 is the average mark. Mean value of this data is 54.8. Next, we have to find median, which is the middle value. And it is easy here because it is an odd value. So it will be 15 plus one divided by twelfth value. 16 by two eighth value, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So median is, 52 and mode is the most repeated value here once again 52 is most repeated so we get mode as well in most situation we can see all the averages come around a specific value let's see the next question the following are the following observations have been arranged in ascending order so it is already arranged median is 63 And we can see how many values are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it is an even number. So it will be n by two plus n by two plus first divided by two. n by two is fifth value plus sixth value divided by two. x plus x plus two divided by two. And the answer is 63. First, we have to get out of this two because the division to be moved first. Two X plus two is equal to 126 plus two changes to minus two or two X is equal to 124 X is equal to 62. Let us see the next question. Find the mode of this value. We can see 18 is replaced, 14 is repeated four times and nothing more. Most repeated value mode is 14. Next question. Find the mean salary of 60 workers of a factory from the following table. Again, this is an ungrouped data, but arranged in a table with frequency. We have xi, fi, and we have to draw another column to find xi, fi. So let this be xi, fi, so that we can apply in the rule x bar is equal to sigma xi, fi divided by sigma fi. And this is actually sigma fi. We don't have to do anything for the denominator. But the numerator is 16 times 3, 48,000. 12 times 4 is 48,000 once again. 50. 48,000, 7 times 6 is 42,000, 8 times 4 is 32,000, 9 times 3 is 27,000 and 10,000. When we add all these things, we will get sigma xi fi is equal to 3,5,000. Applying the rule, we will get x bar is equal to 3,5,000 divided by 60. So therefore, the final mean of this data is 5,083.33 rupees. So the mean salary or average salary of workers in this factory is 5,083.33. Let's see the last question. Give one example of a situation in which mean is an appropriate measure of central tendency. We use mean as an average when values are close to each other. That is the best average to be used. And among all the averages, mean is the best. And when do we use it? When values are closer to each other. And when do we find mean is not an appropriate average, especially when you have a large data and you want to group it into two groups of equal number of people or equal number of items. In such cases, median is the best. So median is the best when you have to group into two parts. 
that's all for this chapter and see you soon.